video back so let me kind of show you how it works real quick okay. so you guys can see me in that picture i should be orange red and yellow yeah. everything around me is blue and black yeah. um, with that being said blue and black are the coldest spots in the camera it's going to adjust based on what's inside the screen so if we take me out of it now everything adjusts mm -hmm. okay so there's going to be differences in there so you put me back in really what we're looking for are blue and black things to come across an orange piece does that make sense mm -hmm. so if my hand was a orb or any kind of entity it would come across and we would be able to see that it doesn't see in 3d the way we do so mm -hmm. it gives you white lines to kind of help you with some of the depth perceptions mm -hmm. um, and it also looks at glass as an object it cannot see through glass so again the technology of the camera is with the thermal imaging, not with our 24 pixel cell phone cameras. Mm -hmm. So literally all I need you to do all night long is hold it horizontal. I'm gonna hand it to you directly. Okay. And that's all you have to do. So do you see the red square? Huh? The red square means that it's recording. Yes. If it turns to a circle, let me know. That means I have to splice some video together for you so you have one long shot. Okay. Um, what I do with that video, and the reason why I have you keep it horizontal. And I try it here. Is, yeah, there you can. Okay. Um, keep it's it like horizontal. So it goes over to YouTube, and then I transfer it back over to my website. So okay. that way it doesn't eat up too much space, and it's a nice, easy video for y'all to watch, and that okay. way I can keep record. All right. So, um, Stephanie, let's get you something exciting. Okay. I, I'm going to stick to the recordable devices tonight so you guys get the most out of it since it's just the two of you. Okay. Um, plus me, and you're going to see some things I'm going to use as well. So, this is a spirit box. I'm sure you guys are familiar with the white noises you guys mm -hmm. see on the okay. ghost hunting shows. This one is a little different. So, this one is going to record the entire sweep for us. Um, and it is going to go through FM radio stations at a slower rate. It's not going to just be white noise. The reason for that is y'all are new to this. Mm -hmm. You know, so I want that radio chatter to come through. I want the song lyrics, I want the DJ, the commercials, whatever you can make out is what I want you to tell me what it is. If you miss something, it's fine because it's recording it, even when it's on mute. So I'm gonna go ahead and get it set up so that way it starts recording. Xbox. And I love this device. So when I do my own investigations, I go to museums and places just like you guys. So I turn this guy on, I put it on mute, throw it in my pocket, and I listen to it later. So I'm, I'm doing an investigation right now, all the data from Fort Sumter. I was there just a few weeks ago, so that'll be my next episode. Um, but with that being said, this was in my pocket. I put it on mute, and I walked through the fort just like everybody else. Hmm. Pretty cool stuff. So That's awesome. Um, but again, you hear radio chatter, that's what I want. I don't care what gender it is. I don't care what tone it's in. There's a little turn style at the very top next to a button. Um, see the button at the top right here? There's a turnstile right here okay, yeah. that controls the volume. So obviously when I'm talking and telling you guys some of the history about these places, just keep it down. Okay. I'll say spirit box is up when we're ready to you know, actually start listening. And I'm going to teach you more about it in the first location. Okay. The first location is really a fuller teach and train. Again, with a group of 10, I kind of break it up so we're not all just standing here for 30 minutes as I teach everybody how to do it. Because it's kind of a learn as you go kind of thing. Mm -hmm. okay. So... I'm gonna give you one more device just so that your hands are very busy. <laughs> so EMF meters, I'm sure you guys are familiar with these yep. guys. Yeah. However, they don't tell you how they actually work. So what they do is they measure three different types of electromagnetic fields. The first one's natural, that's why it's green, it's not doing anything. Um, also it doesn't vibrate or make any noise, so you're gonna to have to kind of keep an eye on it at the same time. Right. Um, it also measures electromagnetic fields from buildings, parking meters, electronic devices. So if my cell phone was next to it, it would give it a pulse. We don't want that's pulses cool. either. So that, that's kind of a false positive. Mm -hmm. kind of thing. Kind of a weird group. <laughs> um, so false positives, <laughs> we'll be able to debunk those pretty easily because if we can look at it and see a rhythm or a pattern, obviously it's coming from some man-made object. Mm -hmm. The last thing is going to be something erratic. Um, we want it to go a little nuts. There are some places where I almost expect it to go a little nuts, but again, I can't speculate what's going to happen. Mm -hmm. So it's kind of our first indication that something is actually working. Now, I don't get excited with one device going off. So if her EMF is going crazy, big deal. I need something else. So at okay. that point, I'll be listening for the spirit boxes, especially when it's on mute or watching your video to see what else is going on in that time period, plus the things I'm gonna be using myself. Okay. So let's talk about those. First thing I'm going to be using is a spirit box. It's going to give us words in the center of the screen from time to time. Okay. And it's going to save them words to a list. This is from my last tour. I turned it on a little early tonight, so it would give us a good mix. Um, okay. So it's at 78 from the last tour. We're going to clear them out because they already have their words. 
and we're going to start off fresh. Kingsley will not be on your list, so I don't know if Kingsley means something to one of y'all. Sorry, I just erased it. No. Uh, no. Oh, there's no. the word sleep. That'll be the first word on your list. He was asleep before yeah. we come over here. There you go. 80% of up. this app is absolute bullshit. It doesn't mean a damn thing. Yeah. It's up to me to find the 5 to 20% that's relatable to the three of us on our tour, whatever we're doing, some kind of direction, history of the person I may be talking about, or the location. Mm -hmm. Also keep in mind that if we ask a question and we don't get a direct answer, we might get it two or three locations later, and vice versa. Okay. So, it, it's, so you have to keep the questions in mind. Yes. Okay. So that's why we record everything. Mm -hmm. Exactly. So the next thing I'm going to use is a reverse spirit box. So what is a reverse spirit box? That is, I debunked this one as well. They basically said it was FM radio stations live being turned backwards. Well, that's impossible. I'm a communications major. You can't do that shit. So, <laughs> sorry for the language. <laughs> it just kind of popped out there. Um, but again, you just, you can't do it. It's impossible. So what did I do? I, I recorded this for over an hour and then I flipped it forwards. I wanted to know what it was saying and where it was coming from. It's literally just a man and a woman saying random words. Okay. I wrote down every word I heard, didn't hear anything twice. I'm going to turn it up so you guys get a gist of what it is. Because the only way you can hear this later is through the recording that I'm going to have on my chest. So I just keep that running. I only turn it up when I walk away from you guys and I'm doing my own little spirit box session. Mm -hmm. And that way I have both of those, the word list and this guy running at the same time. Okay. I do have a backup EMF in case yours dies on my phone. It's not as sensitive, but it works. Okay. Now, as far as proof of what comes out of that reverse spirit box, this I was talking about a woman from England and this is one of the EVPs that I caught, just so everybody can kind of get the gist of Sorry, there's lots to learn and teach here, guys. <laughs> it's okay. okay. A lot different than your other tours, I'm sure. Oh, man. Yeah. yeah. Definitely. And again, this is going to feel more like a conversation between us because I have to kind of know what's going on. Did you guys Something catch breakfast? Baked beans breakfast. So what happened was I... Your spirit box said, I'll fix you. I got baked beans breakfast in real time, not knowing anything of what the hell that was. And then the word tea shows up on that word list. Now, I'll fix you baked beans breakfast and tea. That's a sentence. That's a from, whole sentence. Yeah. Why is that sentence relevant? Because I was talking about a woman from England and baked beans and baked beans for breakfast with mm -hmm. tea is a thing in the UK. They do. Wow. I had no yep. idea. Me neither. But yeah, it's just practice. So That's awesome. All right, so you guys ready to hear some stories? Sure. Yeah, we start here because it's haunted. Of course it is. This place here? Yeah. Okay. It might be worth that rent you look up now. Huh? That might be worth that rent you look up now. I know. $1,500 a, a month to rent apartment C. Yep. So when I own this place and I turn it into a bookstore and ghost hunting shop, I'll rent out the upstairs as a haunted hotel for $500 a night. There you go. And I will get it. So this I'm place, sure you will. Yeah. Especially in this town. Um, but that's actually the goal. Either this place, I have another one in mind that I'll show you guys later on that we pass it by. So the, the, is the bar actually here? Which you know, bar? I thought there was a sign that says something about cave. Yeah, Kane's Rum Bar actually left town. So okay, so it's when, not here. It's not here. They're renovating it for something else. I don't even know what they're turning it into, if okay. it's going to be another bar or not. But it used to be called Big John's. Okay. So Big John was a football player for the 1947 mm. New York Giants. Now, when I tell you stories, I'll emphasize certain words that might come up on our spirit boxes later. New York Giants might be one of them. Um, John is another one. So, again, we'll see what happens. So, but Big John, he used to sit in the back of the bar, and he would nod to the bartender if the cadets that came over from the Citadel, if they were of age or not. One night, two guys come in, they're not of age. Big John tells the bartender, get them the hell out of here. They leave and they come back the next night and try to steal the cash register from the front of the bar. And Big John sees what's going on. They get into a little rough and tumble on the ground. A few shots were fired. John gets shot in the neck. A bullet ricochets and lands in the wall. He gets up after pounding the guy into the floor. He goes to the bartender and says, get me another beer and go get him an ambulance. Oh now, God. nobody died in that story. It was just a bullet. It bounced off John and landed in the wall. So with that being said, it's the bullet hole that haunts the place. That's where the haunting is, because Big John's spirit is still here. They say people that sit in the front of the bar where the bullet hole is, it might not be there anymore with the renovation. I have no idea. I won't know until they reopen back up again. But they say people can busy, headache, nauseous, those kind of things. I bring that shit up on purpose because I don't know how this tour is going to affect you. If I people walk away, if I people pass out, I have CPR training, we're good. <laughs> Just let me know. 
That's the only thing I ask. <laughs> so okay. it happens. I don't say that to scare you. It's a literal health hazard because um, it has happened in the past. So um, the other cool thing about this building is that we had an earthquake here in 1886. It's a big deal mm. for us because we don't get earthquakes. You guys yeah. know that we're mm -hmm. on the East Coast. Yeah. So the piece of the mantling in the front of the bar actually fell off and struck somebody in the head. I don't know who. And apparently that was the first death from that earthquake. That was a seven point something on the Richter scale. Wow. We don't have an exact measurement because it was 1886. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so but the previous owner of this bar used to see darkened shadows out here on East Bay Street after closing. Mm -hmm. So take that for what it's worth. I don't have any verifiable proof. I just like the story to get it to your, your mind off the fact that you could get sick during this tour. <laughs> Fantastic. <laughs> you guys ready to go ghost hunting? Yep. Sure. Let's, Let's do, do this. It. We're going to go this way. Tony's ready to go that I was just going. <laughs> Step in the top. Is it talking again? Okay. <laughs> so, have you lived down here a while? Me? Yeah. Okay. Beach before this. Okay. But I'm originally from Ohio. Oh. So take that for whatever it is, I guess. Uh, Maybe that's the way I, why I talk so damn fast. Alright, so where the hell are we? This is what I call the Big Red Barn lot. Okay, this Big Red Barn is where we keep the horses for the uh, carriage rides. Okay, so the horses are still in there. None of us have lasers. I didn't pass those out tonight. Um, so I do have laser grids that we use to try to catch entities coming through there. Um, but the lasers will upset the horses, so we don't have to worry about that. However, your spirit box, look at you. Your thing's going off already. That's the kind of stuff I need to, like, you need to kind of watch out for. Mm -hmm. Is it doing anything away from the green? Yes, it doesn't have to go all the way to red for it to yeah, I, the I gotta keep my fingers off the camera. <laughs> it's like, there's something really big right there in front of me. Get your hand. Oh, my gosh. Uh, so, the only history I have on this place is this is the same red barn where we kept the horses that delivered milk to Charleston. So, there's your clues. Delivered milk. Charleston and their draft horses. Mm -hmm. So kind of take that for another clue as well. Um, we're going to start teaching you a little bit more about the spirit box. Your TV shows go after Johnny, why'd you kill Billy? Kind of bullshit, right? Stop. Yep. That's why they call it ghost hunting. You're not going to oh. hang out. So oh, your spirit box will speak to horses. So if you're near those windows down there, just kind of keep it at an audible level to you only because they okay. will kick and that will scare the hell out of you. I guarantee it. It's loud. <laughs> That's cool. <laughs> so spirit boxes. We're going to stay away from yes or no questions. First off, is somebody here? No. First off, somebody, that means somebody's here. <laughs> but S and O are two of the most common sounds in the phonetic language. So we don't want to ask yes or no questions. If somebody, if you say somebody here and the DJ says houses, because it was a real estate commercial, you think you heard yes. That's too miscommonly misunderstood. Okay. Okay, so we're going to stay away from yes or no questions. What color is that barn? Red. Red. There's no deviating away from that, right? Mm -hmm. Okay, it's a one-word answer. It's no maroon, purple, whatever. It's red. Mm -hmm. So, what color is the barn? If you don't hear an answer after 30 seconds, ask it again. Give them time to manifest and kind of give us the energy or find the right word from the DJ that they're looking for. Um, could be disembodied as well, which you know is not going to be any of those three things I mentioned before. It's not going to be a DJ, song, lyric, or a commercial. So, if it's disembodied, it's going to go over several waves, and you'll hear it at red one night. Somebody said what color is the barn? Rudolph the red-nosed reindeer is what we heard. Ah. We still got the word red. I'm taking it. That's an answer. Mm. So red was definitely in there. If after three or four tries you're not getting an answer at all, try a new question. What's inside the barn? Now we just opened it up. Delivery, draft, horse, animal, pony, any of those things that relate to a horse. So again, might not be a direct, hey, there's horses in there, Stephanie. You know, it's, it's not going to be like that. Mm -hmm. It's going to be clues. That's what this is all about is putting those clues together. Okay. Mm -hmm. So, that's how the spirit boxes are going to work. Also keep in mind we have two points of audio, his camera, my audio. We also have three spirit boxes running. At times I may ask questions that I didn't tell you and prompt you for when I'm walking away from you. Reason for that is because if I say how many people that I bring with me and you said, I just heard the number two. I asked a question 50 yards away from where you got the answer. There's verifiable proof that something's hanging out with us. Mm -hmm. cool. okay? I do that all the time. Cool. Thermal imaging. Let's talk about that for a second. So take me out of the picture and yeah, kind of pull it Yeah, it changes. So like this is hot here when right. no one else is in the picture. But if I'm in the picture, mm -hmm. everything goes down to blue because I am one. Right. 
You're so, going to be the, you're the baseline at that so point. So if I keep you or her or myself at the edge of it and mm -hmm. something else is over here, then I can see. You're explaining it better than ever I could. Look at that. I got the word <laughs> DNA. So I'm going to give you proof of why that's important to do and keeping somebody in spec at all times. So let's see. Where's that? Over here? I've been sitting here watching this thing because it, it, things would heat oh, up. So this is the next location we're going to. This orange is a wall. You see the two mm -hmm. people walking past it? Let me rewind it, Stephanie missed it. There's gonna be two living people walking past because their heads are orange, do you see them? Yeah. Okay, mm -hmm. we always have a person in view. Let's fast forward a few seconds and see what happens. Watch right there above the wall. We have this guy in view at all times. Oh, I saw him. Oh gosh, yeah. Okay, so that's why we need a baseline at all times. They called me over there because they thought they saw a shadow. I'm up there debunking things, like, oh, it could have been the car shadow, the headlights, this, that, or the other. I watched the video the next morning, boom, two dead people walking past the wall. So take that. I've given this video to firemen and mechanics, the guys who actually use that thing as a tool mm -hmm. on a daily basis. They can't explain it either. They love it. So oh. I like that. I got the word fear. This is going to be an interesting night. <laughs> I know my thing keeps going to yellow. So I also give you the full word list because sometimes, just so you guys know, <clears throat> you're going to text or email me later on and say, my cat's name is Radar, and cat and Radar are going to be on the list. Oh, okay. I don't know that about you. Right. Spirits might. Mm -hmm. Whoever's hanging out with you might. Mm -hmm. So, again, we're going to kind of take that for what it's worth. Um, I am going to let you guys kind of circle around. You can turn up your spirit box and ask those random questions and see what comes up. You can go things as simple as your shirt seems to be a solid color. Mm -hmm. If you don't want to go with the barn, um, I definitely wouldn't go with him. He's got no. 12 colors on. <laughs> um, but ask things that you know the answer to. Okay. What color is my mask? Um, okay. Who does it belong to? You know, because it looks like a doctor nurse mm -hmm. you know, or a doctor or nurse. Um, those kind of things. So ask questions that you know the answer to get used to your devices that's really what this first location is about we're only going to spend like maybe five to eight minutes here and okay. then, like i'll do my own little session to see if i can get in touch with somebody from big john's team i may smoke a little bit so if you see smoke it's not a ghost it's me <laughs> fantastic <laughs> okay um, so go ahead and wander around turn your spirit box up so you guys can both hear it and let him get used to it as well and we'll see what we can come up with here okay What color are my shoes? What color oh, are my shoes? What color is the barn? What color is the barn? What's inside the barn? What's in front of me? How do you How do you What's this barn used for? Where's the orange at the top? Uh, orange is the fourth one. Oh, well. Wow. What's in the barn? What color is his pants? What kind of horses are here?
Oh, it's red. It hit red. Yeah. <laughs> Are you a man or a woman? Are you a man or a woman? So what are you doing right now? What are the horses used for in this carriage house? Not particularly. Not anything I noticed. But that thing's staying red a lot. Well, we're close to a building. Yeah. And that makes sense? Mm hmm Okay. Um, so we do have that electrical box right there. Mm -hmm. Oh. So why don't you go ahead and put right up against the electrical box and see what comes up and see if it goes stronger or if it goes away. So if the orange that you had over here mm -hmm. was coming from there, that would have been red the entire time. That's how sensitive that thing is. So it's obviously not coming from that electrical box. Okay. However, it could be the pulses and things coming out of this area that are being plugged into that area. Mm -hmm. um, I did get the word color out of the reverse gear box. Ah. And then I did get um, what's inside the red barn, shelter. Shelter. So shelter came up on the word list, and it said shelter for what, and it said cockroaches. I'm going <laughs> to take that as part of the 80% bullshit. Um, so we're going to take shelter as, as a legitimate term. Mm -hmm. um, so that, that's Cockroaches pretty, might be pretty legitimate too. It, it might be, but I can't verify that. <laughs> <laughs> I do know uh, development. Um, so we're going to go on to the next location. Okay. Um, what I'm going to tell you about it is we've had a little trouble with some homeless in there. So I'm going to, I've already walked past it once before you guys arrived just to make sure. And okay. I didn't see anybody. So we'll kind of see what comes up when we get there. All right. And ghost hunting isn't always pretty. It might be some parking lots throughout the night. Sure. <laughs> oh, I got one of those in Greensboro and I had a cool story behind it. There used to be a church that had a cemetery and they ended up paving the cemetery, I mean, the parking lot over the cemetery, all over the dead people. So, what people ask me all the time is what cemeteries are we going to and why aren't we there now? Well, first of all, Charleston is one big cemetery. First Same as Savannah, Savannah, yeah. Savannah. Yep. And if you were dead, are you going to hang out where you're buried? Probably not. Probably not. I know I'm not. I'm going <laughs> to go haunt my ex-wife. <laughs> Both your first marriage? Yeah, no, it's my, it's my first. Okay. Sorry if I offended somebody by a ex wife joke. No, that's okay. Uh, I wouldn't want to haunt him. <laughs> <laughs> they closed down a lot of our homeless shelters for the COVID. Oh, that's, that's not so good. Sad. So, where the hell are we? This, we already going off. That's good. Um, First warning about the cameras, people get weird about cameras in their cars. So if you see somebody cutting through the parking lot while we're here, you're just holding a cell phone. Okay. So I wouldn't be the cameraman, so to speak. Just kind of keep it down near your belly. Um, 
people get weird. I've been screamed out plenty of times. Yeah. I'm sorry. <laughs> um, now, granted, we can't see anything on that camera. But if I was a car thief, that would be my first tool, because you can see how long a car's been here with that because of the heat and the, oh. the temperature of it. Mm, yeah. So. Get the motor car. Right. That makes sense. So, yeah, makes where sense. are we? This is the Eliza and Charles Pinckney Mansion site. This is where their home used to be. Um, Eliza and Charles Pinckney, who the hell were they? They had a son named Charles, there was the second one, and they had a third, and they had a nephew named Charles. So there's the third Charles. The son and the nephew were signers of our constitution. However, we just had an election, I hate politics. Let's move on. Yeah, yeah let's leave that alone. <laughs> I just like to point out the historical part. Eliza is the one that fascinates me here, and she's the one that usually likes to come through, which is so great. Um, so Eliza Pinckney married Charles at a young age. Hopefully you can find out who your spirit box. I'm not going to give you answers here. These questions that I'm going to give you are going to be things that you don't know, and hopefully you come up with the right answers. And okay. I'm only going to give you, oh, protest. Interesting. Have you guys had protests from where you're from? Yeah, there was one in Greensboro last week. Oh, now it says stop. Yeah, it's not that good now. Um, I will tell you, after our big riot, when was that? June? The Black Lives Matter riot? Yeah. Okay. Um, Around there. Like, I did a tour that night through it. Uh -huh. It was pretty crazy. And then the next night, all of the data was about the ghost being pissed off about what happened over there. Wow. Everything that came up. Damage. Destroyed. Hate. Um, so, I think the word matter came up. Like, there was all of these terms that was all wrapped around, they were pissed off. Mm -hmm. uh, but anyway, so Eliza married Charles at a young age. Uh, sorry, this is somewhat scripted. I have to know facts. Um, but that was because her father over in England, this is where Baked Beans Breakfast occurred, mm -hmm. and the video that I showed you, just to give you an idea of how active this place is. But her dad thought he, she was dying over in England, and he wanted all his kids home. She didn't want to go. So she got married. It didn't give her citizenship here in the States, but it pretty much solidified she's not going anywhere. Mm -hmm. So, dad gets better. Eliza and Charles have a few kids. Like they're they're living their life here. They're you know they're a pretty prominent family. Um, but dad starts sending gifts over from England. One of those gifts happens to be indigo. Indigo is the plant that makes blue dye that makes our blue jeans blue. You're mm -hmm. wearing it right now. We still use it. Um, it actually started here in her garden, and then they had to move it over to the plantation of Snee Farm over in Mount Pleasant, which is probably a good 15 minutes from here, maybe 20. Um, but anyway, they owned a lot of property here, and indigo is a big deal for Charleston because it saved us from the rice plantations going downhill. Right. We needed another cash crop. So not only did she save the colonies with that, I'm sorry, not only did she save South Carolina, but she saved the colonies because she used dad's uh, contacts overseas to be able to make it into a huge cash crop. Now, a couple weird facts about Eliza that you can ask about. Obviously, you can ask anything you want to about indigo, what color it was, what is it used for, that, yada, yada, yada. Um, but... Eliza was the second wife named Eliza from Charles. So both yeah. both wives go by their maiden name, Eliza Blank Pinkney. I'm not going to tell you what that is. So they both start with the letter L. That's all I'm going to tell you. Um, don't ask anything about the kids. Just stay away from the kids. It usually hinders the activity that we get throughout the night because Eliza's pretty strong here. If you start mm -hmm. poking around the kids, there's tragedies and it's not good. Um, if one of them wants to come through, that's a different story. Uh, you can ask what happened to the mansion. Um, obviously, it's not here anymore. Um, but this was a restaurant not so long ago, and it's going to be a, a commercial hotel now. They're not even going to do an archaeological dig. Um, the slave quarters for Eliza and Charles were back in the back of the parking lot. I do get some activity, but I can't verify anything that I get. Um, I'll get names, I'll get the words, like what their job would have been, things like that. But I can't verify any of it. Um, you can ask anything you want to about Eliza's death. How old she was, what did she die for, uh, where is she buried, um, and which U.S. president was a pallbearer. California. President Carrie her to her grave. Wow. Um, the light that's blinking on the back of Five Church Restaurant over there, it usually when it's blinking, will go in sync with your EMF meter. So if you hold that up like you're... Look at that, I got the word cotton. I wonder if they actually had cotton crops. I'll have to look into that. Okay. Um, that will normally go in sync with, if there's a pulse on your hand, then two seconds later there'll be a pulse on the light. So it's not always blinking, but it's kind of a, a true testament of my barometer of what's going to happen here. Now, I noticed it was blinking on my way over here. Mm -hmm. I park in a garage near where we end. I, I pay for it, whatever. But I always cut through here just to see what's going on, scope it out, see if my barometer over here. If I were to have a grand finale, this would be it. Um, however, it's just a parking lot. Yeah. I like to start off uptown and move my way further into midtown. Um, 
But with that being said, ask as many questions as you want to. I can pretty much verify anything that you ask. Um, however, if you stick with, with him, we'll have the audio recording of what you heard and what questions you were asking. I have the name Jordan. Yeah, I have a cousin named Jordan. Is he dead? <laughs> no. He's 16 and expecting a baby. Okay. <laughs> so, I hate to be bold like that, but my job is dead people. Yeah. So a lot of people are like, uh, Joe's my grandfather's name. Is Grandpa with us? Like, <laughs> I need yeah. to know because yeah. if he's with us, it's irrelevant. Um, but that's kind of, I have to be his that way. Aunt, actually, his grandma just passed away earlier this year. Mm. Whose grandma? Jordan's grandma. Okay. So we'll see. She was my aunt. And I, I've had tours where all of the data went straight to my guests. I've had military guys that have been overseas and lost buddies over there, and all the evidence came to them. Like, it didn't matter what story I told. It's just, mm. it's a matter of. I can't control You're at the right equipment and they right. want to talk. So your other, just keep in mind too that with, when I told you, you're, okay, that thing's going nuts. Um, when we get activity anywhere, I throw as much as I possibly can in one location. Your TV shows, we use one device. Mm -hmm. Or let's take the spirit box and try it. We have three spirit boxes running right now. Mm -hmm. Do you know what I'm saying? Like, I want evidence. I'm not after, let's see how this thing works. I know how this shit works. Let's get the data and the evidence right. so you guys can line it up and see what goes on. I am going to give you a quick analysis in the morning. It's not that I'm just going to hand it over to you and say, good luck. I'm going to look it over for about two hours and then get right up a quick couple paragraph analysis thanking you guys. And this is what I found with some audio markers and things like that. It says list. This is going to be interesting for sure. <laughs> All right. You guys go explore. Stay within the lot. Um, you can turn your spirit box up as loud as you want to here unless you run into homeless people. Homeless people get pissed off with me here because they're trying to sleep and <laughs> we're yeah. playing static. Um, so if you see homeless, just stay away from them and stay safe. And uh, I'm going to stay away from you again. Hopefully I get a little bit more. We'll see if I can get some activity or this, that, and the other. How do you right. know if you get a word through this thing? You're going to hear a DJ, a song like, go ahead and turn it up. I'll help you out. Kind of like whenever we said, ask what's in front of me, and then it said auto zone. I know that wasn't real, but it was funny. Enough, right. But we called it. Yeah. That's exactly what I'm looking for. So, okay. Hey, Eliza. So I'm pretty sure when I turned it up, as soon as you handed it to me, we started walking, I heard it say which. <laughs> so let's, let's ask a question. What do you want to know? Um, you more interested about that president? You seem pretty peculiar yeah, about that. Yeah, yeah. So, who um, was the president who carried Eliza to her grave? Well, you want to ask her directly? She's she's hanging out with oh. us. Oh, okay. Who was the president who carried you to your grave? What president was your pallbearer? Turn it up a little bit. Eliza, it's okay to brag here. Tell us which president was the pallbearer at your funeral. You told me several times. So I prioritize watch more videos. One last time before we move on to another question. Which president was at your funeral? So we might get it later. We might get it later. Go ahead and wander. Okay. The point, but you get the gist of one of them. You gotta just wait for them Something to tell you. you recognize? Yeah. That sounds like it might be an answer. Yeah, and so then really see if it's anything. Anything. See if it's a clue. Okay. It might just be the president and their number. Like what number president they were. 
You see what I'm saying? Yeah, I wouldn't know that. This one's easy. <laughs> I'll give you that one. Okay. Eliza, what did you grow in your yard that was important for a plant? She really likes to grow plants, so y'all can talk plants all night. What did you grow in your yard that was important? Eliza, what was your middle name? This thing is falling off. Eliza, what was your middle name? Jesus. Jesus. I know Jesus I ain't your middle it. name. Do you love I Jesus? I love Jesus. It is. It's very high. Eliza, what year were you alive? Eliza, how did you get a president to carry you at your funeral? That's pretty impressive. Walk that this way. Who's with us? Who's with us? Talking to me a second ago. Breakfast. Breakfast. I'm pretty sure. Eliza, what's the name out. of this city? Eliza, what's the name of the city? Sick California. <laughs> I'm pretty sure that's not right, Eliza. <laughs> Did you want to go to California? Well, yes, no question, babe. I know, but sometimes you gotta ask it. That you do. Thing. You're right. But was California even a state? Huh? What? What year was it again? What year did you die, Eliza?
did you ask anything about the farms? Because I, I heard the word snee, like very clear. Is what? Snee, which was the farm that they took their indigo crops to over in Mount Pleasant. I asked what she grew, or what was important. I don't think I asked what the farm was called. No. But I, I said, was asking questions about the And I said she likes plants. plants. She could talk to you about plants all day long. Yeah, probably. I like plants. So, oh. yeah. Well, a lot of times, too, when I'm here, I'll get things that are related to gardening. So I'll get, like, shovel, dirt, um, bulb, mm -hmm. you know, different kinds of plants that she may have had here. Um, I got the word army. I did get the name Joshua earlier and the word assistant right after it. So it was kind of like I have to look in to see if there was a Joshua that was an assistant to one of the Pinckneys because um, I could have been. Now, okay. I don't know. If, again, I don't know everything. So I'm still learning certain things. Did you get any answers out of that thing at all that you may have? Oh, we, we heard have, Jesus again. Yeah, we heard Jesus. And, and I then, asked her if she loved Jesus. We love Jesus. And then he said, "Because <laughs> that's the third time." Where are we? Because you heard God, and, and she I, heard God. And well, that's he unusual. asked, "Where are we?" And it said California. So. Yeah, and I said that's not true. <laughs> and then it said live. So it wasn't like we're to, talking colonial times. So there yeah. was no California. That's what I, I know, said. I but said that's what, what I, that's what I heard after he asked that. It said California. That's interesting. But I did get army. But I want to say that one of the Pinckneys was a Navy guy. I'll have to dive into that too. Um, so a couple of the answers to kind of give you the gist of what you were looking for. Eliza Lucas was the second wife, uh -huh. the prominent one. Um, and then Eliza Lamb. So Lamb and Lamb. Lucas were okay. the two maiden names. Um, the, the mansion did you know, catch fire in 1861, which would have been long after Charles and Eliza's death. Mm -hmm. um, but obviously the house was still within the family. Um, so fire, burning, anything like that usually comes up when we're here. Uh, I'm trying to think what else. Eliza died at the age of 70. Um, she got married at the age of 22, but she died from what we think was breast cancer. Okay. And she, that was in Philadelphia. She was up there on business at the age of 70. Wow. In colonial times. As a businesswoman, no less, which there was no such thing. Um, but that's also where she's buried, which is Philadelphia. Okay. So, um, I've gotten, and most of these answers, I didn't know when I started the tours. It's shit that came up through the spirit boxes. Cool. So, um, the president, George Washington. I was okay. thinking George Washington. So, For some reason, that's the first one that popped in my brain. So, even if we had the word first, if we had one, um, GW, anything, I mean, I didn't know that either until I had the word Washington. Actually, it was Washington, and then I heard George Washington in the same week on my tours. I'm like, there's got to be something there, because I didn't wow. dive in. So... Lo and behold, I've had the answer multiple times. It was almost like, you need to like know this, Nick. Like, that's what she's yeah, telling me. Yeah, the only number we got was 15. We got 15. Yeah. I don't know about what, but we got 15. Either. That's not a number that's that I can think of that's relevant, because her birthday is December 22nd. She got married at the age of 22. Um, 15. The reason why I asked you to stay away from one of the kids, because there was a tragedy with an infant. Mm -hmm. So the minute we hear anything about a baby, like, we're gone. Like, because... Like, all activity would normally stop if we start poking and prodding. Oh, yeah. And I don't want to, you know, interrogate about mm -hmm. a lost infant. Yeah. Um, no. I'm still not getting anything else here. Did you see anything weird on your camera? No. Nothing that you can think of. All right. So, the next place that we go to, we're going to be walking up East Bay Street. Um, so, your EMF meter is going to go crazy because of the parking meters. Okay. It's definitely a mask up area. So, I'm just kind of taking a breather now before I okay. have to wear it for more than five minutes. Um, we're going to Lodge Alley, which is one of the oldest streets in Charleston. Cool. Um, if you're going to listen to your spirit box along the way, I'm looking for names. Um, I'm not going to tell you why until we actually get there, because it'll make much more sense when we're there. Okay. Um, now, the name, like, we won't spend a whole lot of time there. It's, it's more of a, you need to see some cobblestone streets because you're in Charleston. Yeah. Um, so I like to make sure we at least pass through it. We'll stop there for a couple of minutes, let the spirit boxes pick up what they do. We might not even turn up the spirit box in there just to be kind of brief in there so we can actually go learn the more popular stories around Charleston. Okay. Okay. So, again, we're going to run into some restaurants that are eating outside, and, and this is a very, obviously, a very common street for cops to be going up and down, so I would advise the mask. And I, I was okay. actually going to reach out for one, but I see you have one hanging from your ear now. I, I didn't one. realize you had one. So um, accessory. Thoughts, comments, <laughs> yeah. questions so far? Is this what you guys thought you were getting into? That's pretty cool. Mm -hmm. A lot different, isn't it? Yeah. So that that was the aim. I didn't want you guys to feel like you were on a tour. Mm -hmm. I wanted you guys to learn something. You're gonna, you know, investigate more, and you're gonna remember Eliza's story probably even after you leave here. And even if you don't, you have to record it. Cool. So, um, by all means, keep filming while we're walking. You never know it's gonna pop up anywhere. And uh, why do I have the word planet? 
That's <laughs> stupid. All right. I think I'm ready. Okay. Let's All do right. this. All right. Well, I just got back from Universal. Oh, yeah. Um, we would want to go there. And, uh... Watch out. Mm -hmm. Are you guys going to go for me? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's cool. Well, I usually stop and talk to people like that because they don't realize, like, you guys can come on this. Oh. It's not a business for me. <laughs> <laughs> um, but you want to talk about somebody who struggles with masks that had to really gear up real quick? Mm -hmm. Universal is not like Disney. Disney has no smoking areas anywhere. Yeah, nowhere. They also don't have any rest areas for masks, whereas Universal does. Yeah. So I was able, like, every hour, everybody knew I had to stop. Oh, yeah. Okay. Hey, I just quit smoking a year ago, so I understand. Yeah. That was hard. I went to Disney, and that's hard. The same year they implemented the no smoking. And I was just like, oh, my gosh. That was why I quit. I was like, I can't do this all week. Yeah. <laughs> horrible. Oh, excuse us, Tesla. <laughs> <laughs> Our seven-year-old is obsessed with exotic cars. He knows all about them. Yes, he does. Oh, yeah. this, huh? Who's that? Our seven-year-old. Where is he? Uh, he's with his grandparents this weekend. I've yeah. had kids as young as six come on this tour. Me? Yeah, we left them with the grandparents. This, this is, is our, our anniversary. We, this is a vacation from work. We and needed kids. a break because I've been <laughs> we love both of them since COVID homeschooling. So yeah, I was glad to get out. So you said you have two kids? Yep. Seven and twelve. Look, boys and girls. Boy and a girl. Girl's the oldest. Yeah. She thinks she's twenty. <laughs> <laughs> and 20. Oh, Whoop. gosh. Both girls? Both girls. Uh-oh. Then you know what we're talking about uh -huh. there. <laughs> Been there, done that. <laughs> and the 15-year-old, when she, cause she lives with her mom up in Myrtle Beach. Well, actually, on the tour. Mm -hmm. After this stuff used to be her. Oh. When I left the six-figure job, I was like, bad news, we're back. <laughs> I got a new idea. <laughs> For where? What's that? Where at? Um, the last position I had was with Walmart. Okay. Okay, we have a friend who works at Walmart. She walked away too. They treated you horribly. Well, I worked my way up. I started as an assistant and I worked my way up to co-manager, ready to take on a store. And then I left to go to Barnes & Noble, which obviously is more up my alley. Yeah. I left Barnes & Noble because they were going to close my store and I said, I'm out. This isn't what I got hired for. I went back to Walmart as an HR manager, like three steps down. Mm -hmm. Obviously good with paperwork. So, <laughs> that's it. I got kind of recruited into this. And I was like, no, 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 Money's not everything. That's true. No. So I see the post office on your mask. Is that yeah, like I work for the post office. Been there for 18 years this year. You're probably in an office by now, right? Uh, well, yeah, I, I've. I've supervised carriers. Okay, good for you, man. Yeah, yeah, I'm, it's it's all right. The hours can get long, yeah. especially yeah. here lately. She said no one was with the election and stuff. It was awful. Yeah. It's been the worst worst three months of my life because you know everybody blames the post office for all the politics. I'm like, I just make sure it gets there. I don't yeah. know what you mean. Make all right. If your picture takes you, this is a great opportunity. So that's nice looking. Yeah, this is cool. So I catch a lot of anomalies down here. I get a lot of little wisps that move around and things like that. Cool. If you capture anything, feel free to send it. 
Yeah. So what do you do? I work at Chick-fil-A. Yeah, we just remote school our kids because we don't agree with having our kids wear a mask all day. I don't think it's healthy. Mm -mm. Yeah, I mean, we're kind of with you. We wear them only when they make us. And that is it. So I kind of like stroll Okay. Sure. Damn. <laughs> that that's probably about right. So interesting. <laughs> Sometimes I felt that way. <laughs> I feel like you need to be Bernie Sanders right now with those big back What is going on? <laughs> I love it. I can't even look at my, my work Facebook page no. without seeing Bernie Sanders. Oh, God. This is great. That's the comedic relief we need from the election. Oh, I just don't get into politics at all. Oh, I don't either. I have to follow it just because of, you know, what my job is now. Mm -hmm. and my wife's like, I don't think I've ever seen you so into what's going on in the world. I'm like, I have to. Because like, if there's going to be a protest or riot, I need to be safe. Like, yeah. I need to do a tour with you. Right. There's no way I was going to do a tour on the next day. No. So, let's talk about Lodge Alley for a minute. Um, that's Lodge Alley Inn. It's obviously named after Lodge Alley where we're standing. Uh -huh. Wow. Um, the blue green, like, uh, timeshare type properties. Room okay. 304 is allegedly haunted in there. Every hotel in town has a haunted room. Mm -hmm. None of them give me a free room to verify, so I'm not going to condone any of them until I start mm -hmm. writing about it. Um, so, this place, people used to live here. These, obviously, these two buildings were never here. And the reason why I ask for names is because I have the full list of residents of every person that's ever lived here. From, I think it's 1791 to like 1890-ish, roughly. Okay. can't remember the exact list. But I do get the names Benjamin and John a lot when I'm down here. Benjamin and John both lived here in 1801. They were two out of four people that lived here. Hmm. There was only four people? There was two of them. So it makes sense when I get the name consistently down here that it's Benjamin and John. And it's been not just on my spare box, but the one you're holding as well. Um, the Masons also used to meet down here. Um, I don't have much data on that, so it's just an interesting fact. Uh, also, keep in mind, the peninsula of Charleston, if you picture that in your mind where you are, the edges are all man-made BS. Okay? It's mm -hmm. all stuff we brought on. So those buildings that we see down there, they weren't there. So the smell of low tide would come through here often. They did an archaeological dig and they found out that these people were lower class. They found some of the tools and silverware, little pieces of clothing. They considered them all lower class, which makes sense because that smell of low tide coming through here, these uneven bricks, because these are clay bricks. Mm -hmm. um, handmade, hand laid, and they're obviously uneven and none of them are the same damn shape. Um, but really cool to see, this is one of the oldest streets in Charlestown. You're now inside the Charlestown walls. When we passed the market, um, that's where the Charlestown wall started growing up. So it was literally four walls, that was it. This was one of the oldest streets. So pretty cool to see. That's I'm awesome. Guys through here. Um, when we cut through the rest of this, we're going to be in a neighborhood. So we're just going to be three friends just passing through, mm -hmm. not doing tour guidey stuff because we're not allowed to. Uh, we can pass through quietly. Okay. Um, but we're going to go up and we're going to learn, like, I think it was like six or seven stories up there. And we're really going to do one last full investigation on one final place. I had to reroute this tour because we got some new neighbors in town that don't like tours passing by. So I kind of had to reroute some things. So. I don't really get into pirates, but lately I've had to be because it's Charleston. So I'm sure you guys have pirate stories where you guys are at too. Um, but again, it's something I'm still learning about. So it's like, it's one of those like George Washington deals. Mm -hmm. With Eliza Pinckney, I knew she grew indigo and she was prominent. She's a woman. You know, I like to you know show off the, the proud women we have here in Charleston. So we'll see who comes up out of this pirate story. But there's like four or five major Charleston tales you guys should know. And hopefully we get some stuff that comes up relevant to that uh, when we get there. So, can I see what's up? Cool. I actually had a complaint the other day. Um, it came up on Facebook. It said, I took this tour, but it's all history. Like, how are you going to go ghost hunting without any damn history? Oh, wow. You, what is that right there? That is St. Philip's Steeple. That is so, pretty. So, Stephanie, if you stand to the right, you get a perfect lined up shot of a picture. Oh, wow. That so, is nice. You can always tell where you're at if you can find St. Oh. Philip's Steeple. It's the it's tallest beautiful. steeple we have. And beautiful. we're actually going right up to that church. Nice. Cool.
Yeah, great picture spot. If you have yeah, a I'm bike, a fan of churches. When we was in New Orleans, that, that mass of churches mm -hmm. is breathtaking. I was there on Sunday. Yeah. When they, they oh, they had mass? Mm -hmm. Oh, that's, I bet you that'd be great. Yeah, it was really cool. And actually, the story I have for that, just because you guys have been there, uh, we stayed at Foley House Inn, okay. um, which is right there on that square. And I wanted to be close to where the Forest Gump movie was filmed. Mm -hmm. Okay. Because that was the whole premise of why I'm a big film buff. Um, so we go there, and of course, Foley House is haunted. And I take uh, Byron, he's my little boss, and I take him out the next morning to do his Did you hear that too? Uh huh. Heard what? Oh, but well, you turned around like you heard I something. I was just looking. It sounded like, I don't know, almost like a hail, kind of like steamish, you know, it's like. Okay. Well, and he turned around, but I heard it, so I turned around. Oh, that's weird that you, you didn't hear it. I yeah, I didn't hear it. So I take Byron out. And the night before, of course, I took a ghost tour. Uh, and the ghost guy tells us that uh, there, at times, if you can catch what you're saying. And the tour guy, too, you guys know the other subject. Mm -hmm. It's not in the morning that you catch a ghost. Because then guys don't get dressed until they go on the tours late in the evening. Mm -hmm. Before they catch it. The next morning, he sees some guy up and he passes by a tree. And he doesn't come out the other side. Mm -hmm. He was dressed up in what I thought would have been a costume to, you know, whatever tour he was going So I go back and I thought, well, I should say, you haven't had your first cup of coffee yet. <laughs> and you have no clue because you didn't take your pen. So take that for whatever it is. But I saw it, Byron saw it, he just can't talk. Yeah. So. <laughs> That was really my main. I mean, we went to uh, the Sorrel Weed House. Did you guys go there? Uh, we walked past it. Yeah, we didn't go in it. I mean, we heard the story. And, yeah, there's. Uh, got out tonight. Um, the Sorrel Weed House, like they do paranormal investigations. Uh -huh. They charge hundreds of dollars, by yeah. the way. Um, the weed time, there's a fireplace. Wow. Wasn't there something that happened in the basement there? That's where she tortured her slaves, right? No, you're thinking the one in New Orleans. So I gotta splice some video together. Sorry about that. No big deal. I didn't even I turned into an AV tech with this job. Yeah. <laughs> so I'm actually getting pretty quick with it, by the way. Um, so the reason for that. Let's go and cut that off. Sorry. Second. You're okay. I was so, turning it the wrong way. I like this spot is like every tour stops here to tell this story. So I'm usually like, all right, let me tell you the story just so you know it, and then we're gonna move on because mm -hmm. this isn't really an investigation unless. My friend Sue Howard Hardy is going to correct me with her name. So the reason why that is here is because in 1888, a young lady died. And her name was Sue Howard Hardy. She died 10 days after her stillborn child. Mm. Now, 1987, and 99 years later, we have a local photographer that takes pictures of our cemeteries. Takes a picture, gets a full apparition of a woman with a baby basket next to her. She's wearing a shawl. 1987, no cell phones, no Photoshop, no. Mm -hmm. He sends it to Kodak try to figure out what happened with the picture. They can't figure it out either. I don't show the picture on my tours. If you guys want to look it up, ladies that hold it, start to not feel well. Same symptoms I told you about at Big John's. Pregnant ladies do not have a good pregnancy. I'm not going to be that guy that curses somebody's pregnancy and nine months later I get a phone call. Mm -hmm. So if you want to look it up and look at it on a computer, just don't touch the picture, don't hold the picture, don't pick up the screen, don't look at it on your phone. I'm a very superstitious person. Okay. Take that for what it is. So, we're going to get away from this and side. And it's called it what? It's like another tour. What's that? It's called what? Sue Howard Hardy. Okay. Let's just Google her name. You'll come up with it. Cool. Yeah. Oh, again? Yeah, why not? <laughs> Don't for punishment. I'm going to keep the shot. Yeah, he's dressed up. Yeah. Looks like he's been flown up here many times. Alright, so the brick building over there that we passed up earlier, mm -hmm. it has a story too. That used to be called Botches. That's the other stories in the cemetery shop that I'd like to have. It's what? 
if I were to start a, sh a store, uh -huh. this would be the other building. Okay. So what was it called? Uh, Bachi's. Okay. Bachi's so, restaurant is obviously Italian cuisine. Okay. Um, but the doors don't stay locked in there. Things like move around. Mirrors fall off bathroom windows or off the wall, and they don't break. The reason for that, my friends are scrying and mirrors and that kind of thing, is that if something is coming through it, it's obviously holding it together as it's forcing it off the wall. Hmm. So it's obviously empty and abandoned now. I think Tommy Condon's restaurant is using it as a like a, a storage place, mm -hmm. but I can't. I don't know who owns it now. It was sold back to the city. I'd like to buy it myself because again, I think there's three apartments in that one as well. So that's the story there. So this side, there's two sides of St. Philip Cemetery. Obviously we just seen the eastern side. Mm -hmm. This is the western side. This is where Calhoun is buried because Calhoun, that side's for residents, like uh, natives to Charleston. This side's for everybody else. They couldn't figure out if Calhoun was from here, so they moved him back and forth a couple of times. Oh. All right. Uh, he ended up here because they figured out he's not a native. Um, he's in a carsophagus, so they could just pick him up and take him wherever. Okay. So you can go visit that. However, they did take down the Calhoun monument um, that was over in Marion Square. Um, that was a, a big debate and debacle we had with all oh, the communist. Co um, well, there's really no reason for it to be in Marion Square. Right. Um, it was just a weird place to put it. Um, not to mention, I mean, that thing was 50 feet in the air. So, again, just the wrong place. And I have ties to the people that own that land, um, and they don't have, like, they won't tell me where they're taking the line. So, because I was like, well, where are you guys going to take it? Where's it going to go? He's like, I can't say anything. Okay. It's, it's that big of a deal. Wow. So if you guys walk by there, you're going to see the base, which is a big giant. Um, but it, it's just a cement base, but there's a time capsule inside. It has a lock of Calhoun's hair. It has a cannonball from the Revolutionary War. Like, it, it was a lot of stuff in there. Wow. So they're being very careful on how they take it apart. I haven't been over there in a while, so I don't know how far along they've come. But from what I understand, like, they're really taking their time to find this capsule because they're not even sure that it's there. Okay. The only record we have of it is from Revolutionary War times that they put it there. So, take that for what it is. Look at that, let's talk about east. East and west sides. So, must be something going on. Hmm. East have decrease. So, right past the western side of the cemetery is what we call the pirate house. You can't miss it. Somebody lives there. There's a big anchor in front of it. Okay. Anchor. Okay. So, you can't really investigate up there. You can't go to residences. So, that's why I keep you guys on this side. Now, I tell you all of this because right past that, now this is where, the pirate house is where Blackbeard's men used to come and have a drink, have a place to sleep that wasn't a boat. And then they dug a tunnel from Pirate House underground over to Dock Street Theater, which is one one full block away. Right. And we just filled that in back in the 1990s, so that's verified that it was actually there. Um, but Blackbeard never set foot here. We all know his treasure is up in North Carolina. There was rumor that it was in this tunnel. Oh, okay, yes. cool. <laughs> um, but at the same time, I tell you all that because those three buildings are all tied together. So, there was a young lady that worked at the church. Her name was Nettie Dickerson. Uh -huh. Now, Dock Street Theater, this used to be Dock Street. That's why it was called Dock Street Theater. They then turned it into Planters Hotel, and then we turned it back into Dock Street Theater again. So there's your quick history. This was during Planters Hotel times. It was prostitution. So she sees what's going on down there. Mm -hmm. She's past the marrying age of 17. She's 23. <sighs> Ridiculous. So she goes down there to get a job because she wants to feel loved. She wants to feel wanted. She puts on her best red dress, and she becomes the best loved girl in the whole place. Now, she's still not happy, so she used to go out to the second story balcony and ponder about coming back to the church. The priest sees this one night, he goes down there, he's talking to her, storm rolls in, lightning strikes the broad iron banister that she's leaned on and strikes her dead. Now, they say you can see her ghost from the knees up only. This is why I tell the stories, because it's very interesting. Why from the knees up? Because when we changed it from Planters Hotel back to Dock Street Theater, we raised that first floor ceiling. She's walking on the floor that she knows. So, it took a nerd like me to figure all that out of why is there such a short ghost here? Because <laughs> I couldn't figure it out. Um, you can also see Junius Booth there from time to time. Um, now, mind you, I haven't seen any of these things myself. My investigation there has been very simple. I didn't have many tools just yet. I'll probably go back again. But Junius Booth was the father of John Wilkes Booth. He shot Lincoln okay. in a theater. Now, right. Junius Booth was a traveling actor, just like all actors were back then. And at that same time period, it would have been the same time period that Edgar Allan Poe's mother was a child actress coming through Charleston. Now, if you don't know anything about Edgar Allan Poe in Charleston, there's a lot. He was in the Navy. He actually served under the name Edgar Perry mm -hmm. on Sullivan's Island at Fort Moultrie. So, the story of Annabelle Lee, there's a Unitarian church about two blocks from here. 
is allegedly where Annabelle Lee is buried, because that's a true story. It's in an unmarked grave because her father didn't want Edgar to find her. So nobody knows which grave it is. And neither the Unitarian Church nor the Edgar Allan Poe Museum in Virginia will verify that that story is true. I've already written to both of them. <laughs> trying to investigate. Mm. So, where are we now? This is the Powder Magazine. This is the place we're going to dive into a little bit further. Um, so, the Powder Magazine is an interesting building. Now, there's a pirate story here. I'm still trying to learn where the tie is from this pirate to this building. I don't have it. They just say that this pirate, this female pirate, is such a strong force. This is one that we're still inside the Charlestown walls. It ran right up here through Cumberland Street and ended one block away. So, the Powder Magazine held all of our gunpowder. Mm -hmm. Walls are 32 inches thick. And the roof you see is filled with sand from 1712? Yes, 1712. So 1712 is when, because it finished in 1713. That sand is still there. We did some repairs in the 90s and seeing that the sand is still there because it doesn't degrade. The reason for that is if it were to get attacked from the water, from any kind of battleship, that blast would be contained. So the sand would keep it down and the thick walls would keep the gunpowder safe. So that way it wouldn't influence anything, including the Charlestown walls. It's an interesting hmm. museum. It served in seven different wars, and it's, it's never been blasted. It's never held prisoners, so if you go there and you see galleries and that kind of thing, that's all for show. Um, but it's a great little museum. It's like five bucks to walk through it. It's pretty cool. So the pirate that's attached to this place, interesting story. Her name was Anne Bonnie. Anne Bonnie married a man named James per her father's request. Mm -hmm. Do you know the story? I've heard of Anne Bonnie, but okay. I don't know the so, history. Keep going. Anne Bonnie, she didn't want to be married. So she had an affair with a pirate named Calico Jack. His last name was Rackham. With an R. Sorry, it's hard to hear me through this mask. So when she wants to board the ship, she has to dress up like a man. Because she wants to be part of the crew. So she gets on the ship and she finds another woman doing the exact same thing that she's doing. Her name is Mary Reed. So Mary. Sorry, the word considerably just showed up. I'm trying to see if there's a tie there. Cage. Interesting. Um, so anyway. The two of them decide that they're going to try to have an affair with Calico Jack. Obviously, Anne Bonnie was the one that won that whole thing, so she doesn't have to dress up like a man anymore. Now, the ship gets attacked, and everybody gets tried and hung, except for her and Mary. Her and Mary decide that they're going to tell their captives that they were pregnant. So they got tried on November 28th, uh, 1720. Yeah, 1720. Um, so it was the 300th anniversary when I started telling the story, which was the exact reason why I was like, oh, this is kind of cool. But anyway, Mary, her father, was a, a big Irish political person, so he was able to bail her out. However, Mary stayed in jail, and she died in jail. Anne Bonnie lived a long, healthy life to the age of 84, got remarried, and had many kids. We don't know anything other than that. We don't know the kids' names. We don't know who she married. She don't know where she ended up. She came back to the States for a little, bo a little while, because her and her family did live here. Um, and I've been doing a lot of research on Anne Bonnie. So, again, I haven't really found the tie to the Powder Magazine yet, but I have been getting some clues that are related to Anne Bonnie and Mary Reed while we've been here for the past couple of weeks. Okay. So, um, we're going to kind of walk up close to it. You're obviously going to turn up your spirit box. Um, this is more of a listening session. Mm -hmm. So, if you get anything related to piracy, being a female, strong, you know, a, a power, a force, mm -hmm. anything with her kids, if there was a pregnancy involved. Like, we've been getting weird things at home. Um, so, we can check out the front of the building if you want, especially with the thermal imaging camera. I'm obviously going to be turning up my spirit box at the same time, so we can kind of separate a little bit. Um, are you too cold because we're sitting no, still? No, I'm fine. <laughs> I, know, I talk a lot. You guys got to interact. Um, so, questions, comments, concerns? Am I boring you, Tony? No, I'm good. I'm just watch, trying to figure this out. I'm just watching it. <laughs> So let's get closer to it. And again, if you have questions you want to ask. No, my mask is driving me nuts, though. Yeah, I can't way. see because of my glasses. So, Oakley, do you guys have an Oakley store? Um, mm. In Greensburg, yeah. Oakley sells a anti fog spray. Oh, yeah? Um, it's $15 a bottle. So, But in colder weather like this, when the ground's still wet, it doesn't work very well. I learned that when I was at Universal. Okay. Um, but in regular daytime, daylight hours, phenomenal. Okay. Great stuff. I sprayed my glasses, but once I got outside, like out, outside my car, they, they fog right up because of the moisture on the ground. Yeah. Yeah. So this bit building here is the one you can tour? Um, I honestly don't know what this building is. I know you can see an attachment on this in the 1800s. So this, this is the... This is the powder magazine. It was 
Okay. It's a standalone building. Okay. Um, and again, you could tour this, and it, I actually have a season pass because they have books here that I can't get anywhere else. So I get a discount on them, plus I can get them for a But any writer in town that comes in from Edgar or whatever, I can go straight here. Mm -hmm. he gets <coughs> um, but it, it's a cool little building, and it's the oldest government building on the East Coast. Wow. wow. Yeah. So it's a sight to see for sure. Um, and these are earthquake bolts. Do you guys know about those? Uh -uh. So earthquake bolts, after our big 1886 scare, they started inserting earthquake bolts into all these buildings. They're basically spindles on the inside that tighten the construction. So if we get another earthquake, you can really see like where it would keep it the whole building together. So you got earthquake bolts low here, and then you could see them several on every floor. Oh yeah. Some of them mm -hmm. are going to be decorative when you guys walk around town tomorrow. You're going to see lion heads and pineapples and all kinds of shit. But those are earthquake bolts. Those are just the edges of them. Oh. Okay. Do you guys have other tours planned? No. No, not yet. <laughs> We're just free will and ass. We free will. We like to explore the city. me and my wife do it too. Yeah. We just explore the city. I think we're still on a Western Crescent moon too. I have to look at moon phases, and it's not a full moon where you get more paranormal activity, it's, it's a new moon. moon. Mm -hmm. So I get that question a lot. I thought it's a full moon. I'm like, okay. Well, the full moon actually gives too much light, probably. Well, it's the energy that comes off of it. Mm. And the new moon is all new beginnings. So it's like almost thing, everything for me just resets. Mm. So if I'm getting the same kind of activity, I, I, like say I have Charles Pinckney and he's just telling me the same shit for two weeks, I'm like, damn, it was that new moon. Yeah. Like, new stuff. It, it just resets for me. It's a That's weird cool. energy. I can, I can, it's not like I can sense it. I can see it in my data, mm -hmm. if that tells you anything. And you know what's funny about all the stuff you guys are recording? This is going to get me into my PhD program next year. Cool. Yeah. So I'm actually going to be. Um, how you doing? Yeah, doing. Um, we're, they're actually probably going to be coming over here, so we can actually go around to the front. Okay. Um, so I'm getting into a program. They call it a PhD in productivity, where I get to pick my dissertation. Okay. Cool. So with that, obviously I'll be studying paranormal, writing books, and I'll be a doctor of ghosts when I'm done. So, okay. Uh, Yep. So my, my cool. daughter keeps calling me a ghost doctor. I'm like, that's just not bad. Let's call it a ghost doctor. Who are you going to call? Ghost doctor. <laughs> ghost doctor. <laughs> 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 Say. Oh, hey, he needs a doctor. It's an interesting term. I want to say he's a There was never any prisoners here. There was never any kind of captivity here. It was basically two guards at the door and somebody inside. And that would have pretty much been it here because that's all it could house. Mm -hmm. um, then it turned into all kinds of little textile machinery place. You know, it was all kinds of things. Obviously, we restored it and made it into a museum now. And they used to do paranormal investigations like what we're doing, just here. Telling this whole Anne Bonnie story over and over and over again. It's kind of like, guys, you got to spread it out. Yeah. You can't you know, spend two, three hours in one spot. Like, it's, it's a giant city. Let, let, let the work be done. With a lot of history. Yeah, a shit ton. Like, I basically only took you through two blocks. Mm -hmm. I mean, if you guys go walking around, you're going to find plaques and all kinds of things mm -hmm. elsewhere. And of course, if, if you have questions on what else to do, you have my number. Just okay. text me. Um, but obviously, I'm, I've kind of talked over you listening to your spirit box. That's my okay. apologies. <laughs> At least it's recording for us. So what happens from here is I'm going to actually upload everything tonight. Because um, I got to take Byron to the vet tomorrow early. He had okay. a seizure yesterday. That's oh, not no. good. So it's just kind of weird. My Because we have two. Byron is a support animal for my epilepsy. And mm -hmm. it comes out with all of my medications. And my, my wife says, he's definitely your dog. Why is he having a seizure? I'm like, I don't know. My wife is disabled. So her dog that she has is to help keep her company when I'm not around. You know, she's, she's a wire hair dachshund. Mm -hmm. So we have Byron and Emily, my two poets. That's cute. But Byron, like when he had a seizure yesterday, He's only three. Oh gosh, he's young. Yeah, and he's a dapple. So we're not sure if he's diabetic. It's because of the dapple. We take him to the vet. We take him to the vet. Just, I mean, he would be here with me, but he, he doesn't like people in my bubble. Mm -hmm. So he's kind of protective. Yeah. I'm a dog like same. that. <laughs> he's a very protective dog. Well, Sometimes dog. he's a mutt, but I, I found him. Somebody had beat him, oh. left him on the road. The so yeah, I mean, it was awful. I mean. They, we pulled like a hundred ticks off of him, and I mean, he had been castrated, 
I mean, it was bad. Wow. Yeah, and so um, he's been my dog since. And, I mean, he don't even like my dad will come over. He'll try to eat him. I'm like, stop. <laughs> Go to your room. <laughs> Fire in his train. Like we went through a pretty heavy dog trainer. Mm -hmm. So yeah, he's trained. You know, if I snap my fingers, he'll sit and all that stuff. But if they get near me, I have to put him away so, because he won't even listen to me. I'm sure you saw my latest book. It's called Byron. Yeah. Oh it's, yeah. So yeah, it's basically he's a character in the book. Okay. Oh it's cool. Fiction, but he's on the cover. That's that's. We my saw book. the book. Yeah. So, um, but he when he comes with me to book signings, he paw prints the books for him. Cute. So he'll sit up on a little stool, but I have to have like he wears like almost like a bridle like mm -hmm. a horse does because that's the way I talk to him I don't have to look at him and say Byron sit All I have to do is tug up on the leash and make him sit because it, it kind of gives him that pressure back here He knows uh -huh. you know if I click okay. it this way and give him a little click. He knows we're moving I could say wait and walk away drop the leash and he won't go anywhere Now if you know anything about dachshunds, they are the most ornery little bastards you've ever met in your life <laughs> Like normally like Emily. She's not trained that way. Emily's trained to be pet and love. Like, she's a scaredy cat Byron, if you were to step closer to me, he's gonna bite your ankle. He won't bite right now. He's gonna bite you. See, With we the... can get a small dog next. <laughs> yeah, but my mine's ten now, so I, yeah. I don't know what the hell I did without him. And when I seen him yesterday going through what I go through, like my wife's like, I'm passing it to him. Like, what's going on? Here? I don't know. My dad had a dog that had a lot of seizures. <laughs> it's scary. Yeah. It is. She was old. She was old when her started. Yeah, he's, he's very young. sporty. Mm -hmm. Like he's he's thin. Like everybody says, because we control his food and his diet pretty mm -hmm. pretty close. And everyone says, "Oh, what's wrong with your dog?" I'm like, nothing. He's just not fat. Yeah. Because I have to run him. You mm -hmm. know what I mean? Like he, he's a strong little guy. You know, he, and it's like God to see him suffer is like, damn it. So I was on the phone with the vet when you guys were texting and calling too, because mm -hmm. I was going in between customers. But anyway, I'm going to upload everything tonight, and um, I'll probably have all of your data done by tomorrow afternoon. Normally, okay. I'm done by noon, but there, i got to go to the vet with him. Okay. That's fine. Um, so, concern. Yes, I have a concern with the dog. Yes, concern. Um, but <laughs> I will go through and get your guys' analysis done, and then um, you guys, again, I'll be your go-to for any questions you have. If you guys go somewhere weird like Savannah and take pictures, send it to me. Okay. Like, I'd love to dive into that shit and see if it, you know, if, especially if you find something you don't know what it is. Yeah. Um, okay. I'll have my wife analyze it. That's what she's there for. So Fantastic. I know my tickets are more expensive than everybody else's, but obviously... They really they're... weren't. No. Mm -mm. They're really not. What's there Savannah was... charging for tours? Uh, I think the one we went to was, what, 25 Well, the one for the trolley one that I didn't that like. One was, that, was, that was like 35 Yeah, It was... It was expensive. It was $50 for both of us. Okay, so it was about $25 it was a person. Okay. But, I mean, it was literally a bus ride around the block, and you you went into that theatrics, oh. so... Yeah, it was good. Um, I have to go in comparison with my competitors here. No. Most of them are charging between 20, like I think the max I've seen is 29. Uh huh. Um, obviously, I'm 35. Mm -hmm. so but you use all you pay these for equipment. The experience. Right. You pay for the conversation. Mm -hmm. um, you mm -hmm. pay for the data that you're going to be able to keep. It's my souvenir to you. Thanks for coming. Yeah. Um, you know, that kind of thing. But like, I get a lot of ridicule. So mm -hmm. lately, it's been more like what that guy did and he gave me the nod. They're starting to recognize me because you guys have the tools and, and they don't so they're like okay and here's the difference too is i own this like stories in the cemetery is mine i'm the one that brought it to the other company and now i own it i broke away from him because it's my brand right so with that being said i don't work for these guys they're getting like two dollars a person whereas i get your ticket price right <laughs> i gotta eat <laughs> yeah. so, hey, not that's not business with you guys, but I'm curious to see. I mean, you guys have been understand. down to Savannah, so I'd like yeah. to know. Like Savannah tours, I'm not surprised that they charge. 30 see, we I always stop mentioning Dan. Dan runs the Savannah History and Haunts, but he also has a bunch of other History and Haunts he runs in other cities. In North Carolina, and he also his wife lived in the same town I grew up in, and he grew up in the town over from us. So okay. it's kind of a small world type thing. Yeah. So. And then we ran into him in Savannah in the ghost store, and I kind of yeah, like, he was the owner of the company, so it was and it was really cool. Nice on a personal um, level. So, um, but his tickets were a little bit less, but um, he's a lot like you. I mean, and I think that's the if you want a good ghost store, you have to be personable. You got to get to know your people, and your stories. You know, tell people about the history. Don't just go through a monologue and yeah and stuff like that. Because we've been through that. That was that one that was we didn't have a good time at all. Yeah, that scripted stuff. They they scripted everything. And I think that's what makes it better when you can do it with the owner of the company because they know 
hey, these people are my bread and butter. I gotta do a good job. So, yeah. They used to, so. like when I was at Walmart training 300 people, mm -hmm. they used to tell people, this isn't Stephanie Mark. You're gonna do it the Walmart way. Well, now it's a Nick Mark. So, yeah. like, me and my, well, my wife worked for Walmart too. That's actually how we met. And it was kind of, um, like, I told her, because she was uh, trying to talk to me this morning when I was getting all my texts and phone calls. Because group one was giving something weird, and there was something weird with the questions at the end. I just took them off for now. Um, but she's just like, I gotta go to work. I'm like, honey, it's Nick Mark. I'm taking care of my customers that I got tonight and tomorrow. Like, this is how we eat. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and this is what we gotta do. So, I mean, she gets it, but yeah. she's just like, all right, I gotta go then. I'm like, all right, I'll see you tonight. Because I, I didn't drive Uber today because of Byron. Um, and it's kind of like, you guys book. I'm like, okay, that was my Uber money. I'm good. So I don't have to drive, and I don't want to drive. Yeah. So. You probably don't different. like to drive as much. Do you get a lot of money for Uber? So during COVID, I will tell you that I was making thirty dollars an hour mm -hmm. driving. Um, now I get about fifteen. Oh gosh. Yeah, it's bad, and I don't come down here because it's I'm not paying for the meters and all that other mess. I stay uptown, um, like where I live. I'm actually going to stop the recording since we're just sitting around chatting now. If you guys are good with that. Yes. I love this new voice recorder. It's a three-way. So I had one that just stayed in the pouch and it was just a little one way, but this actually has three microphones on it for us to catch different EVPs and it controls from my phone. So I'm going to stop it, finish recording. Cool. I love it. I just got it and you guys are kind of my guinea pigs because this is only the second swear I've used it on. So I'll stop that. Um, what the hell were we talking about? 